Welcome to This Is My Ride, Bike Stories by Argon 18 Podcast. My name is Sam Long and I'll be your host today. My guest will be Kenny Withrow and today we are going to talk about social media, branding, and telling a story together. So enjoy, have a great listen, it starts now. Sam Long. I've been with Argon 18 for two years now. This year I'm riding the new, brand new 119 Triplus Disc, the Gallium Pro Disc Road Bike, which I've used to get the Mount Lemon KOM and a Dark Matter for gravel rides. All terrific bikes, all super fun. Before we get into it, I'm going to paint you guys a little picture. You, not, you might know Kenny from, uh, from the YouTubes, the guy behind creating the amazing YouTubes, um, if you've ever watched him. But uh, the scene sometimes is a little bit different. We're crammed into a hotel room, me and him right now, sitting about a foot and a half apart, close enough that we could kiss with the microphone between us to get you guys the audio and holding the microphone is an Argon 18 bike. So there you go, guys. We'll get into it. How are you doing, Kenny? I'm doing well. This is kind of intimate. Just me and you in a hotel room <laughs> recording this. Yeah, I don't know. More or less intimate than when I've cried on the camera in front of you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's been, <clears throat> it's quite a ride, which we can dive into, uh, later, but yeah, we, uh, yeah, I mean, kind of nervous being on a podcast. This is my first podcast. I know it's, it's my first podcast as a host. So, uh, so we're both nervous. <laughs> we're both nervous for our first kiss together. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, I'd like to kick it off by asking you a little bit about how you got into it. I don't think a lot of people know that you were actually quite a competitive athlete yourself, um, not only in triathlon, but also baseball. So I'd just like you to, to fill the audience in a bit on that story. Yeah, I um, kind of kind of how we met is I was competing as a triathlete, and I was trying to become a professional triathlete myself. That was like the goal. And um, I was training with Eric Kenny, coach he was my coach at the time, which I think was he yep, coaching? Then not, at the time, not at the same time, but then okay. about six months later, he was then my coach as well. Yep. Yeah. So that's what, how we met is you kind of jumped in on a, uh, I remember the first swim that you showed up at and we were all just like, what were you, 17, 18? I was 18. Yeah. <laughs> we were all just like, and you hopped in my lane. <laughs> the fastest like lane. The fastest I hopped in the lane. fastest lane. <laughs> I had never been a swimmer really, but I thought, oh, I'm good at what I do. I'm hopping in the fastest lane. <laughs> We were all just like, who is this goofy kid? Like, just trying to keep up. And you were just muscling your way through the swim. And you'd be like, you'd come to the, the wall and you'd just be like, breathing so hard. And we were just like, who is this kid? But man, you, you got through the workout. So, uh, yeah. But anyways, yeah. I uh, yeah, I was just competing and trying to go to Kona. That year, 2014, is when I qualified and raced in Kona. Um, and that's where I actually retired. <laughs> triathlon right <laughs> i was like, like mile 22 on coming out of uh the energy lab heading back home <clears throat> mile 22 and i just looked around i was just like i'm at the ironman world championship and this i'm having a horrible time i'm in pain this is hawaii but this sucks i was like i was like i can't do this anymore so that's kind of when i left and backed away and yeah did, did you finish that race? Or I did, yeah. Finished? I finished. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you so. kind of had the realization, like, this isn't this isn't quite my calling. Yeah. I mean, I was, it was I think it was a calling. I was just burnt out because I, okay. Boulder was August, what, Yeah, 3rd? exactly. And then August Kona 3rd, was yeah. two months later. And I was working full-time job. I was trying to make it. You know, there's that age grouper. Yep. And so being super competitive and, um, yeah, that was kind of like uh, the end of my track the end of my triathlon career. Totally, and I remember, yeah, also that Boulder race was super hot. That was my first ever Ironman. I did beat yours truly, Kenny Withrow here, by nine minutes, I checked. <laughs> I beat him by nine minutes, but uh, I was like, there's no possible way I can do another Ironman in two months. Um, yeah. So I, I basically took two months off, and I imagine if I ha would've gone, I maybe would've had a similar uh, thought process as you, because that day at Ironman Boulder was a draining, draining day. Yeah, I sh man. I would have skipped Kona that year. Maybe I'd still be racing. Think about that. We could be competitors. <laughs> we have a different relationship than we do now, huh? <laughs> That'd be a bit of a different relationship, yeah. 
Um, but so then, then he basically got into photography and, and content creation. Yeah, it was actually, so it was during those last few years of racing, uh, competing in triathlons that uh, Instagram was really becoming more and more popular. YouTube was becoming more and more popular. Um, and I kind of saw in my, I kind of saw where it was going. Like I saw the end game and I saw how important video and photos were coming for athletes, especially professional triathletes. So I was picking up a GoPro, I was uh, taking photos um, of my training, kind of sharing my journey and my story on Instagram and <clears throat> it was gaining a lot of traction. And I was getting small companies reaching out to me to like create content for them and also other athletes would reach out um, and I would just create photos for them. So it just kind of like slowly snowballed from there. Um, but once I left triathlon, I, you know, as a lot of you might know, Boulder, it's a bubble, as they say. But the triathlon community is an even smaller bubble. And so I was just like, I got to get out of this. Like, I just need a break to take a step back. So I actually started getting into um, concert and uh, music festival uh, photography and video. And so I was kind of doing that on the side, but then I kept coming back to triathlon because um, I kept being pulled back with a lot of connections. So, so I was always kind of like dabbling in it for the most part, but it really wasn't until 2020. Because then all the concerts year. ended, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I actually just got back from a music festival in Costa Rica <laughs> where I was sleeping in the jungle for two months. <laughs> <laughs> And at my, I was I was creating content around this music festival that was literally, literally built from bamboo from the ground up uh, for two months, and I was just capturing and recording that content and sharing it to this, to their social media. And so once once I came back, um, the pandemic hit, and concerts shut down, all the gigs ended, and I got um, Tim and Rooney reached out to me. And I've kind of known them back when I was, I knew them back when I was racing, but they reached out to me to kind of uh, help out with their content and it just, it's kind of taken off from, from there. So now I do this full time before it was just part time. I was working like three other jobs and yeah, to make this, it work. Yeah. Just to make this work. Uh, but this, where I'm at now is definitely like, I've always had this vision. It's kind of been the dream and now you're living the dream. I, I, people say, oh, you're living the dream. I'm chase. I always reply with, I'm chasing the dream. So I'm definitely not living it right now. I'm chasing it. I don't know what living the dream looks like. I'll probably look back 20 years from now. i like, yeah, I was definitely living it, but, um, yeah, I'm still chasing it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's a great point you brought up because I always feel the same way. People say the same thing to me. Oh, you're living the dream. And I guess two years ago, if I thought I was where I am now, I would have said, oh yeah, that'd be living the dream. But now I'm like wanting to pursue bigger goals and bigger steps. And so I'm like, oh, living the dream is still three steps down the road. And yeah. and I think that means we've both maybe just got big ambitions. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> always, you're, you know, as an athlete too, like you're always wanting to see what else is out there. How far can you push yourself? Um, and for me creatively, like how far I can push that and, um, you know, working with you, like on your YouTube channel and all the content and just seeing you grow as you grow, like I grow, you know, and, um, as my creativity grows, your brand grows. So it's kind of a nice little dance that we have. Yeah, totally. And, and I guess I just want to jump back, uh, and tell another little story. Um, while he started working with Tim and Rennie, um, and I was out in Tucson, which is where we are right now. And, and I remember I got the Mount Lemon KOM and, and I think you were messaging me and you were like, hey, so did you get any content around this? And I'm like, nope, sorry. I got on my bike. I went and I rode Mount Lemon. I got a photo at the top. And you're like, what a shame, basically. You know, it's like, it's like that's such a good story and you got nothing. And, and then um, especially a year ago, my funds were so small that you kept on saying, oh, let's make something happen. Let's make something happen. And then I went and I did the Everesting, which was like a big thing. You climbed 29,000 feet uh, on your bike in a day as well. And I was back in Boulder then and you came out and you did a bunch of stuff for 303 Triathlon then. Um, and they did an article and then and then we we're like, how do we make this work? And then, uh, yeah, I basically got collected and hustled, hustled the sponsors um, to get some funds and paid you uh, far less than you deserved <laughs> for a year. And, and I was like, I don't need a YouTube. YouTube's kind of overrated, but you're like, let's just start your YouTube. Let's see where it goes. And uh, 
yeah, without you pushing me, there's no way I would have gotten that, that done. And I don't think uh, I, I'd really be known by the triathlon world like I am now. So. Well, I don't, I don't know. I think you'd be known. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think you'd have any problems without me. But um, yeah, and even to f- even go further back on that, this kind of goes back to 2014 when we first met and we were trained kind of, I wouldn't say training together, but you know, we were there. You, you were flogging me in the pool is what he means. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he means he was destroying me. <laughs> uh, but like our relationship kind of started there. And then there were a few years where we were going back and forth and totally. trying to create. I think we've been wanting to create your YouTube channel for almost three years now, totally. I'd say. Yep. Um, it was just a matter of getting resources. Yeah, getting resources. And again, like my time was limited because I was just, again, working three jobs and trying to do this. So just like, yeah, just trying to be as effect- effective as possible. And um, But man, here we are. Sitting yeah. in a hotel room. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So I guess... Yeah, I mean, let's dive into sort of what your creative mind is about and, and how you bring it sort of to life and, and what you see in certain athletes and, and I guess even what you think people, if they're on their own, how they can kind of bring their, their content and who they think they are to life um, in, a, in a photo or a short format video. Yeah, I think, so how I view it, so just to give the audience a little a little bit more context. So I work with you. I work with Justin Metzler and Jeannie. I also work with Tim and Rini. And I do all their YouTube videos. And so it's a lot of video editing. Like it's a lot of time. That's a lot, especially YouTube. So for me, what I have to do is I kind of have to break it down. And I think that's kind of the beauty of breaking you guys down to each you you guys are each individual athletes right yep. you have your own style your own personality and what i try to do is i try to capture that and bring that to the table so i there's not much fabrication on my side of trying to force anything i mean as you know it's all run and gun totally so exactly. like what you see on youtube and the sam you get that is sam long um very i don't think ever am i like hey i need you to say actually no there's never no. been a time where yeah, like yeah. you need to say this, this i don't this. think i would even if you <laughs> tried <laughs> but um yeah and i think i think that's what makes what you do even harder um for the pto leading into daytona they had me do a bit of a the unbreakable series with them and and the experience was basically a polar opposite between what i did with them and what i did with you they essentially they literally interviewed me in a chair for like an hour and 45 minutes to get like 90 seconds of audio clip, which they like edited it and took out exactly what they wanted. Um, and it, that made me a little concerned in some ways because I knew like, you know, I could say five paragraphs and they take out three words and then put it with another three words from 30 minutes mm-hmm. later and get exactly what they want. But uh, it wasn't so much me and uh, it, they did a great job with it still, but yeah. like you have to do it all on the fly and capture it basically on the moment yeah that was actually really interesting so like the pto <clears throat> professional triathlon organization they their media they are trying that's they're they're trying to expose the sport and they're trying to bring that drama right because that's what kind of brings fans and attention you know so after seeing that we were kind of like they did a great job phenomenal job with that series. But even afterwards we were like, okay, like let's actually show who Sam Long is. And I think we did a video is your swim video. Remember yeah, that? Exactly. And we really got, we, we, after the swim, you, I think you're, you're pretty disappointed totally in, yep. in your performance. And <clears throat> on video, we kind of showed, I mean, you kind of broke down, but that gave the audience like, that just showed you how much you actually, how much passion you have for this sport and just for how much you want to get better. And you're in this just because <clears throat> you truly want to be the best. And so that was a very like kind of shift for a lot of people to be like, yeah, oh, this guy, I mean. As opposed to always laughing, always joking, always having fun, which yes. I often am. Yeah. But um, I'm doing that usually when things are going my way. Yeah. Um, and if they're not going my way, um, 
yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm deep down, I'm a pretty serious guy and I'm certainly working, working really hard to be the best I can. Yeah. Um, and, and I think going on that, like that video was really multiple months in the taking because if we had just started working together or if we hadn't known each other since 2014, like it's unlikely that I would have felt comfortable being that vulnerable in front of you because even though in the back of my head, I know, oh, this is gonna go out and 25,000 people are gonna watch this. In the moment, all you're thinking about is, am I opening up to a dear friend or am I opening up to someone that I don't really know at all? Um, yeah. And so I think, I think, yeah, having that relationship uh, and taking the time to develop that relationship is really important. Yeah, so that kind of circles back to your question of like, you know, other athletes and just like kind of getting into their own content is just be authentic. I know you hear this but a lot, but just be yourself, be authentic. That's what people are attracted to. You know, that openness, open and honest, like, personality that you have, like, just bring that to the table. And I think that's the best storytelling you can get. I think anymore you can see through all the fabrication, through all the fakeness, and, <clears throat> you know, that you, you know, you can see on social media these days. So, yeah, it kind of gets, it brings down to a personal level and it makes people just more attracted and just more real like there's just more realness to it and I think that's what brings a lot of um, uh, attraction to the channel so. totally and, and I, I guess on that like because you've never had made me say something I haven't had to say but you've sometimes had to censor me right <laughs> I know yeah oh my god <laughs> you've been pretty good like you've been good but there's definitely been a few times like for example uh, Ironman Florida <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you're coming in that race hot. Yep. Hot. I was really confident. I was in the best fitness of my life. And then I, yeah, I mean. So, kind of give it back, sir. You finished. I finished third. Uh, and I finished two and a half minutes behind Chris Lieferman, who, looking back now, had an outstanding race. He played the tactics brilliantly. And I was then 31 seconds behind Matt Hansen, who was in second. Um, and. Basically on the bike, I had a bonk um, with 10 miles left and I literally got off my bike and then like stretched and I, yeah, I basically rode the final 10 miles uh, as if it was a recovery ride and lost all the time and then eventually recomposed myself and ended up running a very good marathon. But uh, I think afterwards, yeah, I was just disappointed because it was like, I felt like I could have had more. I felt like I should have won the race, but uh, and, and at first I sort of blamed it on on the guy in first um, because he, he sort of played me for a fool. But looking back now, it was more my fault. And and then I had like three margaritas in. And I was like, let's get this video out. And I just went on this rampage. And then Kenny uh, thankfully said like, oh no, we're not putting this out. Let's reshoot it. Which I'm really thankful now because now that I've had more time to think about it, um, I actually learned a lot from Chris in that race. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, that night I remember as we we just did the post-race interview and again you were pretty heated um and yeah three margaritas later so <laughs> the big unit uh you're yeah you were pretty heated and i just remember kind of sitting there and sometimes like in some ways i i can be in charge of your brand right and your image like i'm giving out the final product in many ways so, yeah certainly on the youtube yes, you're giving out yeah, the final and product. the content yeah. so it's like when I, when, during the interview, I was like, okay, I was like, yeah, this could be good, right? This will ruff, ruffle some feathers, like, hey, he's being real, he's being honest. But then I just had to be like, okay, he just finished an Ironman. Like, what was it, what'd you do it in? Uh, 8.55. Sorry, 7.55, not 8.55, 7.55. 55. <laughs> get out of here with that. Uh, <laughs> what is that? But yeah, so you, I mean, you just did an Ironman, like, a long day, so just like, emotions are high so let's so we took like four days yeah four or five days we both got back into boulder and then that's when we did the interview so it was just more level-headed kind of more grounded um i'd say and just kind of like like you said you you just kind of sat back and you know what were the lessons learned exactly. from that day and so yeah so yeah it's kind of like there's definitely times where i have to like while I'm editing, if I hear something or I see something I don't like, I'll just leave it out, you know, and just like, because right. it's like, hey, that's just not, that's not you. That's not your brand. 
yeah. more. But honestly, I haven't had to do. I think I've only that had was to do really that one once. of the only. Yeah, yeah, so. maybe the only instance. But um, as if you guys watch the YouTube channel, like you know, Sam <laughs> is being Sam, and he's just being real and honest the whole time. So that's just all him. I just, I mean, I just turn on the camera. I say action. <laughs> right. And you go. <laughs> yeah. And then, so. and then we have fun with it, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I guess if, if someone's on their own and they're making it on their own, like, would censorship be an issue? I, I guess I guess what I'm getting at is in this sport, it feels like my personal opinion is that people are actually too far on the other side, that they're so worried about saying something wrong that they never say anything at all. But... Um, we've just proven that occasionally you do need that censorship. So I guess, how do we, how do people maybe strike that balance? Especially in today's world, you know, cancel culture, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think triathletes aren't too controversial, you know, like I think a lot of it just comes down to, as you said, like a lot of people are afraid of ex sharing, you know, like, um, cause they're afraid of judgment. Right. And that's, I think that's, that's just a, a basic human insecurity right uh, you know I'm I have that you know I think we all do so I think for an athlete that's doing it on their own I would just again like I mean let's start with camera gear your iPhone it, it's that's probably the best place to start is your phone okay it has, it has photos I mean you can take a yeah. photo you can take a video it's in your pocket at all times um, it's super easy and I think that's where that's where you start um, with that. You don't need to hire, right? And then maybe next would be a GoPro. Is yes. that correct? Oh, yeah, GoPro. but not if you're me because I don't know how to work those things and close the latches. <laughs> and the first time I bought one, I broke it in three minutes bringing it in the water. So I haven't since bought another GoPro. <laughs> the GoPro is water waterproof, but not when you have an external mic on it. We we forgot to tell Sam that, so he took it in the water, and oh, that was the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, like, you don't need a huge investment with photo and video, um, especially uh, personal branding for an athlete. Um, yeah, just like Rachel Olson and Andre, they they have a GoPro and a small drone, and that's how they're and they're doing it on their own. They're editing the videos on iMovie, yeah, totally. which is free. It comes. I mean, if you have a Mac, right? It comes with the Mac, and so. Invest in a, a GoPro. I think it does everything, especially in this sport. You can take it into water. If you if it takes a tumble on the trail or on the bike, like not that you, you know, if you drop it off the bike, right? <laughs> it'll take a tumble. And it'll, it'll Are you still... referring to the fact that I took a big crash last week, Kenny? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get yeah. Pay, stay tuned for that video. Stay tuned for that video. Um, yeah. So I mean, the investment is small. I think it just all comes down to just um, just being consistent too. Like putting it out. Yeah, share a story. Like, what, what are your goals? Put it out there. Put it out there to the community. I mean, honestly, more often than not, you're going to get support more than anything. Right. Totally. Like, you put it out there and you start sharing and being authentic. Like, yeah. It sounds simple, I know, but I think a lot of people do find just have to kind of get over the insecurity of opening of up, opening up and being themselves and yep. and putting that out to basically the whole world to watch. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and certainly I know like I've I've certainly dealt with that myself. Um like even a year ago it would it was very hard for me to say I want to be the best triathlete in the world. Even if I've thought that for five years that that's gonna be the goal I want to do and that's the goal I want to accomplish. To then actually say that and put that out there, um, you start to say like, oh well, have I met the criteria to be allowed to say that yet and things like that, you know, and um but then you put it out and yeah, of course, there's always, there's criticism no matter what you do. If you say I like to eat eggs for breakfast, you're going to get criticism because whatever, they're high in saturated fat, you know? I mean, it's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you just have to ignore, you just, I mean, you just got to, there's always that one keyboard warrior out there that's, you know, just sitting on the keyboard, hammering away bad comments or dislikes, you know, but... Then you look at the hundred other comments and likes of people actually supporting you. That's where you got to pay attention. Yeah, and just you know? focus the effort yeah. on. And just and just believe if you believe in the process and you believe in your journey, then you know I think sharing it should should come pretty easily. Totally. So I guess and, th and this question is just coming to my mind. So we're going well. Actually, we've been going off script for a while here, guys. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but um, 
you mentioned early on, like you saw when Instagram was created and you kind of saw where it was going. Mm -hmm. Um, do you see a similar shift now with like, is YouTube sort of becoming the main thing for athletes? Um, and, and with that, should all athletes have a YouTube or should they focus their efforts on Instagram more? And, and finally, I guess the third part of that question is there's this crazy thing called TikTok out there now. Should athletes be getting on that, on that crazy thing? Great question. <clears throat> so the past year, and I think a lot of it, so 2020 with no racing, I think a lot of triathletes were like having a bit of an identity crisis maybe yeah absolutely of like wait who am i without racing what am i what's the purpose here you know yeah what basically basically what's my job yeah that's what i asked myself what's my job it was no longer racing yep was it making the sponsors happy how do i make the sponsors happy well ultimately make the sponsors happy if you can you know highlight their product in a positive way yeah yeah exactly so <clears throat> youtube has taken off big time because of that i think everyone's starting the YouTube channel like but I don't think YouTube is for everybody okay I think it's only for select athletes I think it should only be for select athletes it's a lot of work on the back yeah. end it's a lot of work video is just a lot of work right yep. you have to you, you know you have to have a story to tell you, then you have to turn around and edit it and then you have to like then promote it and YouTube's pretty hard to promote um I guess what I would suggest for a lot of athletes, it's Instagram. Start with Instagram. Okay. All eyes are on Instagram. Yep. And that's, for me personally, that's where I go, right? Instagram has photo, it has video, it has stories. It now kind of has a feature very similar to TikTok with uh, reels. So I think Instagram is the place to be and I think it will be for a long time. Okay. YouTube channels, I think, if you can be if you can be informative I think that's the most important thing so if you're giving information to the audience that's why people are going to YouTube is they want to they're going for information right right they want to see what you eat in a day which that's a video we need to get to like they yeah. want to see what your training is like it's a tall task yeah, it's, it's a, a tall, tall task, task. I'm like, <laughs> everyone says we want it it's easy to get out I'm like Kenny has to basically follow me for 18 hours of the day at all times seeing what I'm putting in my mouth <laughs> We'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. <laughs> and I'm going to have to myself, what do I eat, eat, eat in a day? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so it's just YouTube can be a tall task. And um, where was I going with that? The information people want, Yeah, just right? being very informative. Yeah. So, um, you know, if I want to learn something, I go straight to YouTube. I don't totally. even go to Google anymore. Even they, they own it. Google owns YouTube. I just go straight to YouTube and Google what I want to learn. Right. How do I pump up a bike tire? Yeah. How do I... How do I invest in the stock market? Whatever it is yeah, that exactly. we crave. Um, and so for me as a creative, like I love the hype videos. I love creating hype videos to good music, just like boom, 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 quick, quick, fast action. And you will see that in some of your videos. Like I include that, but those are for like, those are like 30 seconds long, maybe. And then I cut straight to audio. You talking, yeah, yeah. you sharing your experience, yeah. you sharing what the workout is and stats. Cause people love, those Strava nerds love Totally. And, and this was our last experiment. We just put out a video yesterday. Um, it, it's titled 137 mile long ride. Yeah. Um, and we were like, oh, let's, let's put in all the, all the stats from the ride with it, which is a type of information, right? People yeah. want to know the info of how a top uh, triathlon cyclist rides. And so far um, in the 20, 20 hours it's been out, I would say that's been the favorite part of people's videos. Yeah. 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 Um, so overall, like, Personally, I would I would start I I would stick with it, Instagram and create ten to fifteen second videos. I mean, we all have a memory span of a goldfish, right? Yeah. As of right now, <laughs> it's like three seconds. You're just like scrolling through. So, if you can catch their attention within in those three seconds, and make them stick for fifteen, if you can tell a fifteen second story, I think you're golden. And then just post, you know, twice a day on stories. Of, you know, three to four photos a week. Right. Well, okay. I don't take that advice. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my stories go crazy, yeah. as people might know. But well, yeah, I mean, but I, I guess I'm sharing just from a perspective of those who are maybe a, right. you know, timid to share to too share. much. Start just start that. with like two stories a day. Uh, share three to four stories or instru like photos on the gram yeah. and cover the bases. Be like, 
you know, throughout the week, seven, you know, seven days in a week. So, you know, one photo could be a bike. Next photo could be a swim. Third photo could be the run. And the fourth could be, I don't know, what you're eating. So if you can just cover those bases weekly, there, you just cover it. That makes it easier, the guessing game easier, and you can just like follow that guide, simple guideline. Totally. Um, so one thing I've noticed on my own Instagram um, is sometimes when I try and curate a post, you know, I have the photo, I spend a lot of time uh, thinking about what I want to say, I write it out ahead of time, and often those posts don't do the best. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's like, I just get a photo, say you send me a photo, it just speaks to me, it's like a caption just comes to me immediately, it, I write it in 20 seconds and I just post it and it's like, and it just goes off. So there's got to be some type of a balance between like planning it, but also just going, say, going with the flow and what's on your mind, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just <clears throat> what you're feeling in that moment. I mean, just you're sharing it, you know, and that it, usually it's more true and real. So, I mean, mm-hmm. we've, you can Time and time again, whether it's YouTube or Instagram, that's kind of the yeah, yeah. The key, just, right? Again, just yeah. What's in the moment? What's like, yeah. if you think and say, oh, I'm going to plan and if I don't have a good swim test, I'm going to get teary eyed on the camera. That's probably not going to be successful. But, but if you yeah. go and do the test and it doesn't go successful and you end up getting teary eyed, <laughs> it's, it, it, it will be successful because yeah, yeah. that's just was the natural human reaction. Yeah. And, and I guess maybe that's what people want. They want. They want to see the human condition and the human reaction because as fake as social media can be, what people actually want to see there is is real social connection, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think what's, you know, what I try to bring alive to the videos that I create with um, all my athletes I work with is just that real and rawness. So some of my cuts are just very simple. Like, you'll, you know, they're not the most aesthetically pleasing cuts or footage that you might see on a cinematic you know video that you watch on on youtube because there's some youtube channels out there in the triathlon space that are very beautifully done cinematic. yeah and, and they've done better that really truthfully they've done better than mine they're not as new as mine but they've done very very well so yeah. people must like those as well yeah people so people like that stuff too but i just like personally have always loved just um just being very real with the cuts and just showing what it's what it's really like because it's a very on my end it's very run and gun so like when you're out on a five hour ride and I see an epic shot that I missed because I wasn't there because I was stuck in traffic or I you know right I lost at, the, at the border in Mexico <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like we're behind we lost you guys like I can't tell you to turn around because you have right. you, yep. end of the day is you're out here to win exactly like you're training so i i have to pretty much be a fly on the wall and i have to capture what i see and what i can in the moment right and and at the pace that the athlete is moving at <laughs> yes you've, um. you've dropped me a few times on the bike because <laughs> i can't keep yeah. up twice by my counting <laughs> twice yes. one was uphill and i saw a moose and i was just like got distracted and then the second time what it was like 60 mile per hour gust and i was on a mountain bike and you were running yeah and i couldn't keep up <laughs> so yeah so i mean it's just definitely like there's there's and that's another point is like there's so many different styles of how to just so many different ways of telling a story there's no right or wrong way right of telling it's, a story i think it's just putting right. it out there and reacting to what the audience wants to see more of right so, totally I mean, and what you think yourself is important um because for me i'm i agree I'm, and maybe that's why we work so well together because for me having these epic cinematic shots um and potentially having to loop back to get that is of uh, zero interest to me. Yeah. But what is of interest to me is like I'm out there, I'm crushing my session, um, I'm focused on getting my session done, and and like on our run yesterday that we did, like I feel like I was pretty much just doing what I needed to do for my session, and you were doing what you needed to do to get the content, and we weren't even really like having communication between us. It was like we were both just in our elements and our zones doing what we needed to do, you know, and then the final creation. I guess is a mix of both of those. Yeah, and that kind of plays into when you know me as an athlete. I I compete in the sport, so I know exactly what these workouts are like as an athlete, and I know exactly where your headspace 
is at and where it should be. So we've had many conversations leading up to Ironman Florida where I've said, dude, you like take some time to yourself. Just be yeah, by totally. yourself. Like just get get in that mind space. Don't worry about me. I'll capture the content. Yeah. So it's kind of that's I think that's what's really cool is like and for any content creator, I guess that's looking to get into the sport of triathlon or any sport, it's it's I think you'll do much better if you understand the sport and you right. also understand what it takes to be that athlete. Yeah. Cuz last thing you want to do is interfere mm. with their training and and um yeah, you don't want to interfere with it cuz I think there was a comment yesterday on YouTube someone asked if if all this air quotes here attention is right. distracting you from the race. And we kind of looked at each other like, well, it's not really a distraction because you're doing your training. Yeah, exactly. I just happen to be right there capturing it and trying to keep up. So there's yeah. in no way, and in no way am I forcing anything out of you. Like, hey, hey, I, give me this quick interview. Stop, stop real quick. This is a cool spot. You know, like, it's all on the fly. I might pull up to you on the bike and be like, how you feeling? Yeah, just yeah, very exactly. Simple, and you'll give it and then you'll go. Like, so. Right. From my perspective, it's almost like you've sometimes played two different roles with me. You're, you're capturing the content, but sometimes... And it's almost like you're just doing it as a friend because you understand me well. Like, oh, you know, have you thought about maybe you just need to take some time to find a, a quiet space for you. You seem a little like extra amped up and like you're not relaxing. And you're not saying that to produce content. You're saying that, I think, because you're a friend and you, you want me to have a great race or you just notice these things. Um, yeah, you build this relationship, especially being this close with the athlete. <clears throat> you really build this relationship and it, it turns into that a friendship in many ways right like yeah it, I, I think it would pretty much have to be yeah I, I think I think it only goes one of two ways you either don't get along and you <laughs> stop working together <laughs> because it's like oh you're having to spend a lot of time together you're having to get in grungy hotel rooms and share a room before a race like you're having to do all sorts of things or you're like oh we got along really well like let's keep pursuing it basically yeah I think for so for me that was like you know when I was racing um there was definitely a point where I was like, I guess you could call it a fanboy, right? I would see in a certain athlete, especially in Boulder, and be right. like, oh my God, that's like, oh my God, so that's Tim and Ernie. Like, I remember seeing them, yeah, yeah, like, exactly. just geeking out, like, oh my God, it's Tim and Ernie. And then there was definitely a point where I was just like, you know what? They're, they're, they're just people. They're just people. Like, yeah. they're just like me. Sam but, Long thrashing in the pool. Yeah. He, he never had any problem seeing me as just a normal, mere mortal uh, person. This goofy kid. <laughs> So, but yeah, it's just kind of like, but th that's what's been so cool is like, I, I think taking a step back, those, those three to four years where I kind of left triathlon to kind of find my, my identity and kind of find my new path in life, which then came full circle and brought me back into triathlon is I can now come in and <clears throat> I see it as like, I come in and now I, it's like, it, it is, it comes back to being a, it's that friendship and I've yeah. built such a great relationship with you with Justin and Jeannie right now and with Tim and Rainey like totally. you guys I mean we'll I text you guys just we just have exactly. I'll have dinner with you guys we'll go get drinks together like so that that's definitely for me more valuable I guess in the yeah. long run than trying to uh, put out the content that's not you know that might be a bit more fabricated or fake you know like or forcing content totally. right out so and definitely not using it as like uh, you know, what's uh, just yeah, a tool to whatever gain fame or yeah, something. Exactly. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and I think even when we approach our videos, it's I at least I think the question we ask isn't so much like oh what's going to get the most likes or the most views or the most attention. I think what we ask ourselves is like what's the most real to to what happened. And because yeah. to me, I almost look at it like it's almost like a personal diary or a personal movie or something. Mm -hmm. And it's like in 50 years I can look back and be like whoa this is this is what I was doing and, and I want that to be a real reflection of what I was doing not sort of made up at all yeah it's kind of it's funny you say that because there's been a few times even last year but more so this year where I have been able to kind of sit back and see moments and I've actually brought my personal camera along to take right. photos of these moments and I share it with you guys but like just the other day when you were sitting when was that, what was that small town south of here? Arivaca. Arivaca. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It was you, Ben Hoffman. Yep. Jason Poole. Jason Poole. And Andre Lopez. Yeah. 
And you guys were all just what? This is a population of seven. I seven hundred twenty-six. Yeah, I think seven hundred twenty-three, maybe. A small seven hundred twenty-seven <laughs> with us there. <laughs> yeah. So like, you guys were all just sitting out front eating ruffles, potato chips, and just like snacking. And I just like took my camera. I was like, and I just took the photo. And I was like, I just kind of looked at. It, and I was like, this is just a cool moment. Totally. Five years from now, ten years from now, look back on and be like, how special that was, especially to see you the young gun coming up in the sport and ben hoffman right sitting right next to each other sitting right eating next to the same other. eating the same ruffles chips yeah and just having a great conversation with each other it's just like to me i was like that's cool because i so i've known ben Hoff, ben hoffman since 2007 yeah when i first got in the sport i that's who i looked up to him that's who i was like emailing back and forth like hey that was when i was a fanboy right and so it was just kind of cool to kind of see you just how things connect. How, yeah, how they connect. And right. just like the connection on that is just, yeah, it's, it's beyond me. It's, it's really cool. So I that stuff like that, I truly appreciate and right. will cherish. Yeah, and I guess I, I think the best moments are when, as an athlete, you, you forget the camera is there almost. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I've noticed, like, say, um, if I have an athlete who's not used to having a camera around them ever and I they're training with me like I can tell they're so so excited and then they're pushing the pace because they're excited because there's a cameraman and all of this and the more time I've been able to spend around you the more it's like oh the camera's there but it's like I'm just being myself basically yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's it's funny as you can become more I guess uh, comfortable in front of the camera because it's sort of like a I don't know. Like, it's, is it a learned skill? I don't really know what you would call it, but it's definitely know. something. I think it's, it's definitely new age, right? Yeah. I don't think there's some athletes, probably some older athletes that maybe don't appreciate it. I don't know if they appreciate it, but I don't know. Right. Maybe they don't see the value in it as much, but I, it just, it's, it's individual, right? It comes down yeah. to each individual. I guess that, you know, a question for you is, has there ever been a time where you kind of are like, yeah, I, I'm kind of annoyed there's a cameraman around or are you just like uh, yeah you know this is a bit too much like i mean yeah of course i going back to that swim video you know like and i'm feeling bad about myself and i got ripped a new one by all my training mates too which was fine because they just cared about me but it was like honestly and truthfully i just wanted to like get in my car and drive home and turn on the music and be like somber and alone in my thoughts but it was like oh like this is this is the process i've committed to and i've committed to showing it and then uh yeah i guess then you just sort of have to be comfortable with it in in the good moments and the bad moments and um my favorite moments are like in a race when i'm not even a, at all aware that the cameras like i have no clue where the cameras are mm -hmm. because i'm just like you you know you get 20 20 miles into that marathon run and it's like you could be standing two feet away from me and i barely even have any idea so i think that's just when it's like the absolute raw reality just comes out yeah. um and that's the best i think but uh yeah i mean i don't know i guess some there's always times you don't want cameras there but uh yeah i mean <laughs> you, you you just commit and you say and you just kind of learn to have them there and, and be happy with them there and and then equal be almost more happy when when you're showing sort of the the real side of the the human condition of pursuing being the best you can possibly be and yeah and being happy showing that because you know you're inspiring people to be better as well yeah i think that's been the cool part especially with your channel is like the yo 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 when we first oh God, so, yeah. so when we when me and sam kind of first met back what you know late last year right you've already established kind of the yo 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 yeah but i remember i came in i was like bro this is like, gonna be a thing bro bro <laughs> i was like i was like we i want people saying that at races like I want that. I want people to be like, "Yo, yo, yo," and it worked the first. I wouldn't say yeah. it worked, but it just happened the first race. So like, I think that's been the fun part. Is just like how many messages you get of people. Yeah, sending their kid, like, a, a three-year-old kid wearing a hot pink outfit, saying, "Yo, yo, yo." Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like those are just moments of of joy. They're joy. You kind. Of, that's the part for me too. That's rewarding. Is and I. It's so refreshing to see that because I'm like, oh wow, this is actually being seen by people other than, you know, myself and you and your mom. You know, right. like, like <laughs> it's like reaching, it's reaching yeah. just so, like, further than I could ever imagine. 
And so from other countries, people are sending you videos. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, pretty cool. It's really, really cool. How That's global cool. the world's come is just, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it does sometimes feel, oh, we put all this effort in to making a video and all that. And yeah, it's basically me and you watching it. And my parents maybe, but half the time they don't know how to work YouTube, so they don't watch it even. <laughs> I'm like, mom, did you see my new video I put out? What? What's YouTube? I'm like, all right, never mind. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me, I'll, I'll end with one final question. Um, just kind of, I guess, a little tidbit of advice. And you can end with whatever else you want as well. But um, from a very novice photographer myself, like if I'm to take a, a photo of myself or a photo of my train mates, like what's one thing I could, I could think about? Mm. Your lighting. Okay. Oh, and your filters. All right. F filters. Just like, don't do anything crazy. You know, just like add a little bit of saturation. Don't make it look fake, don't look basically. At, yeah, don't make it look too fake. So, I mean, Instagram offers a lot of their own right. filters, but I think a lot of people like oversaturate and add right. way too much contrast. And it's just a, just a bit overdone, so... And how about lighting? You mean when you're taking the photo, like you want the light on, shining on the subject, basically? Yeah, it's so, shining. Yeah. Sometimes it's really hard to shoot into the sun. I feel like maybe a lot of people know this, but, um, and then also the big thing is like horizontal or vertical. Uh, you know, just I don't know. <laughs> That's a whole other topic. But <laughs> if you're sending me video, make sure it's horizontal. <laughs> okay. Turn the camera sideways. <laughs> shoot the video. Send it to me. <laughs> but. Yeah, I, I guess overall just, ha I mean, have fun with it, but share the story. The story is the most important thing. Okay. Um, is if you have a good story, then it doesn't matter what you're shooting on. You could right. be shooting on a $6,000 camera, and it could be a horrible story, or you could be shooting on your iPhone. And there's a lot of people out there that just shoot straight from their iPhone, and they have a huge following. Right. So, and they're sharing their story. They're sharing their belief. They believe what, you know, right. their goals are, and they're sharing that with the world, so. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, Kenny. Um, well, I guess I got to close this thing out, guys. Um, obviously, this podcast brought to you from Argon 18 Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I am Sam Long, and if you like this episode, you can follow me on my personal social networks on Sam Go Long on Instagram. And our joint YouTube is Going Long with Sam Long. And Kenny, the man here, Kenny Withrow, is at It's Kenny Withrow on Instagram, as well as at No Coast Visuals. So go and give all of us a follow. And again, thank you to Argon18 for the initiative of getting us on here. And I look forward to hearing the next episodes and host of This Is My Ride, Bike Stories by Argon18. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks, guys.